On today's show, shipping goes electric, Rivians spotted in Australia, a limo, and I announce the winner of my giveaway. G'day, my name's Chris and thanks for clicking on the link. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, it honestly does help the channel. But if you want to see more news like this more often, maybe consider joining us over here on Patreon where from as little as $2.50 per month, you get early access to news, behind the scenes, polls and a lot more that you just don't get here. And I want to say a big thank you to my producers, Adam Tyson, Alan Burnt, Ashley Hill, Chaotic Media Technology, MN ICT Specialist, Nigel Farrier, and Tessa and the Gong. And I also want to have a big warm welcome to my newest God Level member, Robert Reardon. He's actually been on, um, I think, a silver level for a while now, and he's uh, bumped it up to gold. So thank you very much, Robert. And look, also a big thank you to my uh, patrons. So first up, did you know that in a country like Norway, more than a million containers are transported by more than 40,000 trucks between uh, Porsgrunn and Brevik every year. This 40 kilometer round trip journey equates to almost 300,000 tons of CO2. What if it could be done more efficiently by a ship that actually carries 103 containers per load, uses the electricity from renewable sources, of which Norway is quite rich in, travels at a speed of um, 13 knots, that's about 25, 30 k's per hour, and well, here's a big deal. It's all done autonomously. Yeah, yeah, autonomously. Well, soon that is. Reported in CNN, Norwegian company Yarrow Birklen is scheduled to make its first journey before the end of this year. End of this year. It will use a seven megawatt hour battery and will be the first, uh, at first rather, manned by a skeleton crew to ensure that it doesn't do an ever given. Yeah, you remember that one? Anyway, they will eventually uh, become fully autonomous and they'll monitor its movements from three on um, like offshore data control centers and its whole journey from loading to unloading and everything in between will be done without nobody on board, in including actually no one who's gonna load it. It's, it's mind blowing stuff. And it got me thinking, okay, this is only like 20 Ks in one journey and like 40 round trip. Why bother? Well, it turns out that shifting the transport to like water, it seems slower and more energy intensive, especially when you're thinking about all those things and, and even like getting freight to and from ports. But as it turns out, ships handle roughly 90% of global trade and like nearly 11 billion tons of stuff is shipped every year. Yet, that industry only contributes between 2.5 and 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Compare that to almost 12% of robe transport. It's clear that if we can shift to renewable energy sources and also move to these massive quantities of products and remove the tens of thousands of truck journeys from our roads, then we'll all be better off. Earlier last week, I reported to my awesome patrons how someone, somewhere, source not very clear, that Rivian might make right-hand drive vehicles for not only the UK, but also Australia. I didn't want to report here publicly because I have a policy of not publishing material that can't be substantiated. You know the sort of thing. A source close to Tesla. Yeah, no, doesn't fly here. Well. Just three days ago, Chasing Cars spied left-hand drive versions of the Rivian R1T dual cab ute and the R1S large SUV at Sydney Airport. These photos, obviously from Chasing Cars, link is below folks, so please do go check out the story, show the seven-seater R1S wrapped in camouflage. It seems that all signs are pointing to that being a thing. Rivian is in talks with the UK government about a potential uh, factory there and UK has some very good EV incentives and importantly for us, they drive on the left side of the road with their steering on the right. And these test vehicles being not so secreted into Australia, no doubt I'm really actually thinking this is going to be a thing and bring it on. 
check this car out. It looks like a Toyota Camry meets a Kia Cerato. Yeah. Well, it turns out it's a limo by Mobilize. Mobilize who? <laughs> yeah, I had to look, actually look them up myself. And it turns out this company is actually a subsidiary of Renault Group. And they'll be making uh, electric vehicles and energy products. And I guess we have to thank Tesla for making other car companies get out of their comfort zone. This car will be revealed at the Munich IAA Mobility Show and features a single 110 kilowatt motor that's capable of producing 150 horsepower, horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque with a 0 to 100 k's per hour in a leisurely 9.6 seconds. Limo indeed. Designed for taxis, private hire vehicles and fleet use, the limo will be available exclusively via a subscription service which I'm kind of confused about. So does it mean for people who drive them, they effectively lease them? Or is it for users like ride, ride sharing people, people, you know, people, passengers in vehicles who actually can subscribe to a service to be driven in these vehicles. It, it, it's not very clear from the media release, but I think it's actually the former. So if you actually know, please put it down in the comments below and yeah, pin it so that everyone actually is, is better informed on this. A few details of the limo, available this time next year, it's 4.67 meters long, has boot space of only 411 liters. So that's not especially big for a taxi or limo has flush door handles that pop out when the vehicle unlocks, LED headlamps, a 10.25 inch uh, screen that's used for the instrument panel, whilst a 12.3 version features the center dashboard for multimedia navigation and more. The mobilized limo uses a liquid cooled lithium ion battery with a capacity of 60 kilowatt hours or 450 kilometers of range WLTP pending. So let's just pretend 400 kilometers, shall we? I find it interesting that a car company like Renault is launching a side business like this, which if I understand correctly, is hiring out its vehicles to professional drivers. The economics must work out and I hope they succeed because for every petrol or diesel vehicle that we get off the road, the sooner we can all breathe a bit better and importantly, the more people can get the, an ex, to experience an EV and start thinking, hey, this is nice, it's electric. Yay! Okay, it's time to announce the winner of the EV Armor Centre Console Wrap for the Tesla Model 3 and one month on Patreon as a producer of my channel. So, to find our winner, we're actually going to do a producer call now where the team is going to help me find the winner. Let's go to that. Awesome. All right, now you guys, you're going to help me uh, find a winner for this thing. Uh, Nige and... Adam to do is Nige, you give me a digit between one and nine, or in fact, excuse me, give me a digit between zero and nine. Seven. Seven, all right. Adam, give me the same, zero and nine. Seven. <laughs> 77, so I'm gonna go- Actually, seven. 77. I was gonna say seven if he asked me. Oh my <laughs> gosh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Sorry, guess who the winner is? Not good random number generators. Apparently. Guess who the winner is? It's Evie <laughs> who? Dave. Who's that? Evie Dave. Evie Dave. He's on. He's on Twitter. I'm certain of it. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Awesome. All right. Congrats is he congratulations, Evie. Congratulations, <laughs> Evie Dave. I'll be in contact. Hey. <laughs> there we go. Seventy-seven. <laughs> Well, I do hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, maybe consider subscribing. It's absolutely free. If you want to see more content like this, consider joining me over here somewhere for um, behind the scenes, early access to news, polls, and a lot more. And thank you to my patrons, and thank you to you for watching. Otherwise, please do be good and be green.